Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to unbox and review the 3018 Pro CNC machine. This comes from Banggood, which is basically the equivalent of Amazon in China. So today we are going to set it up and see how it turns out. Now, there are two versions of this machine. There is 3018 and then there is 3018 Pro. Both of them are roughly the same price. Uh, this costs about $300 with shipping so the only difference between these two versions is that the second version which is the pro version which is this one here is has a superior design at least that's what they say so we will look at how that turns out so I have designed a few CNC's myself and uh, some large ones some small ones so I have a bit of experience with CNC's so it will be interesting to see how did the design and how does it perform at the end of the day. So let's start by cutting off the box. It's a lot of tape here. Good packaging safety first and there we have it so we have a manual so I would say it's it's not so bad good images good manual then we have the build plate now this plate is basically 300 by 18 this is uh, the size of the machine that uh, the area of the machine that it can cut so we will keep that aside then we have the power supply this is the main body it's aluminium then we have the rods and then we have the lead screw then we can see we have these linear bearings so they are 3d printed and we have the metallic bearing inside so the housing is basically 3d printed then we have the motors as you can see this is NEMA 17 here we have the controller and as you can see it uses these three driver boards to actually run the three motors that we have and it also allows the limit switches by the way this kit does not come with limit switches or emergency switch that's why I bought it separately so here you can see uh, this stuff is pretty cheap you can get it for I think it was ten dollars for maybe ten of these so we, we will be connecting this as well we will uh, upgrade the machine so we will talk about that later on I believe that is the plate that will come above this hopefully and then we have our z-axis you can see it's already assembled and we have a 3d printed part by looking at the 3d print it looks very good and you can tell that they used a very small layer heights so it's not 0 0.2 or even 0 0.15 probably 0 0.1 so that looks really good so some of the reviews I saw they mentioned that sometimes this part wobbles so we will have to see if we can enhance it or somehow um, improve it then we have the spindle motor so this is the motor that comes with the kit but since I'm not just going to use it for engraving I want to cut it as well I also ordered this spindle which is 500 watts and we will be adding this as well to the machine but that will we will do in another video for now we will just use this and test out if it works well 
Then we also have the offline controller. So what does offline mean? Offline means that you will be able to run this without uh, requiring a PC. So you can insert an SD card, which is surprisingly there already. We have an SD card that comes with it. It is 128 MB, but still, you know, something better than nothing. So we have this uh, wild, uh, sorry, offline control that we can use. And if we have this, we do not need to connect it with the computer. It's, it will be like a 3D printer. You just insert the SD card and hit run and it will do the cutting for you. So this is a very uh, important thing if you do not want your computer next to your CNC and uh, this will help quite a lot, hopefully. And then we have some handy tools and we have all of them in a box. I, I have to say they have organized it very well. It's, it's, it's a very cheap machine, but the, the amount of effort they have put, it seems quite a lot for this price. So hats off. By the way, the link for this machine will be in the description if you want to get one of yours. Then we have these clamps. These clamps basically help you secure the plate that you're cutting in place. And uh, it seems that they are acrylic and the thickness seems to be maybe around 9 mm. So this is the whole kit and we also have the USB cable for plugging it directly to the computer. And we also have uh, these side plates and this is one of the biggest difference between Pro and uh, the regular one, the, uh, the regular design, that this basically comes as one piece whereas in the previous version they were separate pieces and you have to assemble them. So they say that it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to assemble all of this and the other one takes about two to three hours so i'm not sure if that is true we will we will test it out and see how it goes so this is not aluminium by the way this is some sort of um, plastic material i'm not sure what this is called so let's get started let's start building and see how it turns out So here is our completed CNC machine and you can see that we have put it on a foam base. You can see this base. Uh, this is to avoid vibrations. And then we also have a offline controller that we have connected and you can see on the right hand side we have the power supply. Now we have connected all the motors uh, with their stepper driver and then we have also connected our spindle motor to our uh, power supply as well. So we also have this offline controller which is very handy. You can see that this is the main menu where you have control, file and set. So if we go into control we can actually move our axis. So this is the x-axis then we have the y. Let me bring it back. There you go. And there is our Z axis. So if you look closely, it's actually going down. So this controller actually comes with an SD card and the SD card has a built in, uh, what do you call G code 
that is there for testing so we are going to use that g code to actually test out our machine so they do recommend that uh, you actually check it first with the without the tool and then you try it with the tool so i will try it first without the tool and then we are going to use i have this acrylic piece lying around so we are going to use this to actually uh, engrave and see what happens so the file name here is i think iphone yeah it's iphone so we are going to print this i think it will print the name iphone so let's see how that works out okay so now i have set the zero position of the machine uh, all you have to do is go to that position and that should be fine so now we will do the z axis so for z axis it's always recommended to go in uh, small increments so there we have it so now my machine is at zero 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 and we can start the machining process so i will go to file and then i will select the iphone and we will press OK. And as you can see, it has started engraving. Okay, so now the engraving is done and we can move and see how it went. So let's go back. So here is the engraving and as you can see it's very good it's very detailed so now that I have completed the setup of the machine and tested the first engraving now I am at a place where I can give my honest review of this machine so in terms of assembly it took me a while it did not take 30 minutes it took me much more than that maybe one and a half to two hours which is again I went slow and there were a few mistakes here and there but uh, for a machine like this which is this cheap I think that's a good price and uh, that timing is not bad so one and a half two hours is uh, very very reasonable and then there were a few missing things for example they said that they will send 10 bits but they sent uh, five instead and one of the Allen key was missing one of the bolts uh, but again there were a lot of spare bolts which I used instead of that and it wasn't a problem not nothing uh, so far was a deal breaker but then I came across this collet now this collet is absolutely horrible it's it's not just bad it's unusable so the uh, the problem is that it's not aligned properly and it does not uh, center the bits so it doesn't fit properly I tried a lot of different bits and uh, many different things but it didn't work out so what I did at the end I had a different one so this is the one that came this upper part is the one that came with the kit but the bottom part and the one inside this is the uh, spring collet it, it did not work well so what I did is I replaced both of these with uh, the one I had from one of my other machines so here you can see that now it's perfectly centered and it works very well so th this is not actually a deal breaker but again if you don't use uh, if you don't replace this it will not work properly so you have to replace it so the other things might be acceptable but this one uh, not really you cannot use it unless you fix this 
So other than that, the whole experience was good. The footprint of the machine is very good given uh, the build plate. So you can cut quite a bit and uh, you can add more materials. So we did not test uh, a lot of materials. We just tested acrylic. So in the next video, maybe we will add, uh, we will try to cut and we will try to cut different materials like acrylic, wood and uh, a lot more things. And then we also want to add the limit switches and I will upgrade the spindle as well. So stay tuned for that. Overall, I would say this is a good buy and I would definitely recommend getting one. And uh, as I go along, I will be sharing more of my opinions as how it cuts. And I will also be doing a lot of PCBs out of this. So my goal is to actually get this machine good enough for a PCB uh, milling. So this is what we will be trying to achieve. And I will show you the process of how I will uh, try different things to enhance the PCB designs so that we can cut them properly. So this is it for uh, today's video. I hope this was uh, something useful. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.